O bargain bag, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Well, it's seven CDs in a bag, two bags of 14 CDs. I mean, it's not that hard to count, really. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, bargain bag time. Once again, my favorite time of the month. What can I say? It's it's kind of like Christmas 12 times a year, you know, just opening up the bags, not knowing what's inside them. Oh, what goodies might be awaiting my eager ears. But anyway, yes, for those of you, uh, most of you know the routine. For those of you who don't, a Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. And in between opening the two bargain bags, I uh, talk about a CD that I have found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain section of a music retailer near you. Never be afraid to look in the bargain section. You don't know what kind of goodies are going to be awaiting you in there. Uh, and anyway, but before I get to any of that, I will quickly go over the CDs that were in last month's bargain bag. Uh, now, uh, disclaimer here, uh, these first two I actually did not listen to, but for totally valid reasons, which I will talk about. Uh, the first one is a Christmas CD, so um, I will be keeping this one. I'm just, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's way past Christmas. It's over a month past Christmas, so it's just, you know, it's just not the time for Christmas music. So I figured I would uh, add this one to my so far small stack of uh, unlistened Christmas CDs that I will be uh, breaking out and popping into my player uh, just after Thanksgiving is when I usually start listening to Christmas music. So uh, Christmas with Yolanda Adams is this one, just in case you were wondering. So yeah, I am hanging on to this one, but haven't listened to it yet. Um, I will try and rem remember to let you know what I think uh, in the December bargain bag, I guess. So yeah, that one's a hanger on her. Uh, this one, though, uh, I did not listen to for the simple reason that it's a classical compilation. It is uh, a, an assortment of the more romantic and softer forms of classical uh, compositions. You know, it's just kind of, you know, classical music is classical music, you know. Uh, not that I'm not a fan of it. I have a small but respectable collection of classical music in my uh, CD library, but this one's just kind of, I kind of know what to expect in this one, so that's why I didn't listen to it. And it is going in the cast-offs, oh, before I forget, and I usually do, uh, For if any of you guys want any of the cast-offs from this set, uh, let me know uh, in the comments below or in a direct message on Twitter. And uh, if you live in the States, I will go be happy to send them to you. Uh, no postage necessary. If you live outside the States, that'll be a different question. Uh, but yeah, I usually hang onto these CDs for about two weeks after the upload date of the video. So. Let me know if you, uh, you know, think it over for the next two weeks. If you'll see anything you like that I'm not keeping for myself, let me know. This next one, you know, yes, I end every of one of my videos with Life's Too Short to Be a Music Snob, but this kind of stuff goes beyond music snobbery. This is just people trying to make money off of cheap ways of, you know, cranking out music. Uh, this is one of those CDs, poorly done covers of you know, recent pop chart hits, uh, you know, recent in this case being 2002. Oh, it doesn't even have a copyright date on it. But uh, yeah, Breathe by Faith Hill, uh, Redneck Woman by... I can't remember what her name is. Uh, but yeah, just st stuff that's done by faceless uh, artists, uh, in this case, digitally mastered music featuring the hit crew. You know, the, the nameless... And the singers probably get paid dirt for this stuff, since they're not even mentioned by name. But yeah, this this is the stuff I just can't stand. Stick to the the real Now collections, you know, Now That's What I Call Music. Not now That's What Mom Calls Country Music. It's just crap. I'm sorry, but life's too short to be a music snob. But that's just, that goes beyond snobbery. That's just crap. Plain and simple. Okay, now that I'm down off my soapbox, let's get on with the rest of the stuff. Um... Season to Risk is the name of this band. It was a two-song uh, sing a single or an EP. Um, yeah, a rock kind of sort of on the hard side of rock, maybe post-grunge kind of stuff. It just didn't catch my ears. And uh, that is that is the case with most of the my outcasts is, you know, not that it's bad stuff. It just didn't grab me. Uh, this guy, um, James Angel, the uh, name of the album is Private Player. Uh, this is, it's a little bit on the art pop side, uh, his, you know, stuff is a little bit, a little bit out there, uh, you know, he's perfect, perfectly okay at it, it just wasn't my kind of thing. Uh, if you like the slightly out there kind of stuff, uh, you know, you might like it. 
uh, Mandalay. This is the that's the name of this artist, I think. Uh, Solace is the name of the album, and this is actually a two disc set. Um, the regular album and a remix CD. So, but this is kind of EDM uh, dance oriented stuff. I just didn't think much of it, but if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go for it. Uh, now we're coming up more to the um, the overriding theme, which was easy listening and some classical stuff. Uh, Fred Astaire here. Uh, this was this was okay. Uh, it's just you know, these songs for some reason just didn't really grab me. You know. Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Bing Crosby, yeah, I can get into them. Fred Astaire just didn't quite uh, think. It's kind of like with uh, Dean Martin. I'm just, I just haven't been able to get into Dean Martin either. So, but yeah, if you want that, as I said, I'm hanging on to these CDs for two weeks uh, past the upload date of the video. So, give me a holler if you want any of these. Uh, this one, though, I think I'm going to keep. Uh, London Symphony Orchestra. And uh, for those of you who might not be aware, the London Symphony Orchestra is one of the major preeminent um, orchestras out there. They're the ones who actually that you actually heard on the original soundtrack recordings of the original Star Wars trilogy and I believe also the prequel trilogy from the 90s uh, as well as the original Indiana Jones films, the first three of those. And so yeah, back in the 80s they worked with John Williams uh, doing soundtrack recordings a lot. So uh, yeah, just a top-notch orchestra. And this is some some good stuff here. Some this is just some a uh, regular classical oeuvre. This is not uh, soundtrack hits or anything. But uh, yeah, I like this one. I think I'm going to keep it for a while. And now this one I've decided to hang on to, um, partly because I mean I like the sound of it, but also because it's kind of a uh, an underrepresented portion of music history. This is James P. Johnson. He is an African American classical composer, which there aren't a lot of those out there. I mean Scott Joplin is just about the only one otherwise. Uh, and actually, this music does kind of sound like Scott Joplin. It would it would kind of stand to reason, I guess. But also, he's got hints of Rhapsody in Blue, Gershwin, I guess it is. Uh, some of Gershwin's more classical and instrumental leaning stuff uh, is is kind of what a lot of this sounds like too. So, you know, I, I kind of like the sound of it, and but also because it's it's kind of a, a forgotten part of music history, I guess you'd say. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know, as I said, not very many African American classical composers from the early half of the uh, 20th century. So yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm very happy to add this one to my collection. Uh, this next one, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep or not. And, and I usually do these in the order of the ones I'm most likely to keep, but I kind of uh, didn't do that, obviously. Uh, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, um, Walk That Walk, Talk That Talk. Yeah, these guys are kind of um, Southern rock, maybe vaguely Tex-Mex, sort of, you know, maybe not quite there. But yeah, just kind of, you know, barroom rock, southern rock kind of stuff. It's okay. It's good. I mean, hey, they have kind of a reputation. They've, they're a pretty well-known band. But yeah, just I'm going to listen to this once or twice more before I decide to truly decide to let it go. But as I said, if any, any of you out there see this and say, oh, I want it, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to send it to you. Uh, then, but then these next four, I'm going to keep, actually. So yeah. Four out, of four, four out of 14, that's a pretty good uh, ratio there. Uh, Michael Feinstein sings Irving Berlin. This is kind of, you know, the title says it all. Uh, you know, great American uh, songbook stuff sung by Michael Feinstein. I'd never actually, I had heard of Michael Feinstein quite a bit uh, before now, but I'd never actually t had the time, taken the time to pick up one of his CDs and, and actually listen to it. Guy's got a good voice, a, a bit of a higher register than I expected out of him. Uh, I'm not sure why I expected him to have uh, more of a tenor uh, lower tenor voice, but anyway, uh, good stuff, very good stuff. And then uh, this one's kind of cool, Live at Caesar's Palace. Uh, this is some very well-known uh, names, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Andy Williams, Lena Horne, Keeley Smith, Duke Ellington. I mean, a an A-list of uh, artists on here, a uh, bunch of live recordings from Caesar's Palace, good sound quality, and, and just good stuff, entertaining stuff for somebody who's never been to and probably will never be at Caesar's Palace. Uh, to take in a live show. Hey, I've got it there on CD. I can have it right in my own bedroom. Anyway, and then down to the last two. Uh, this one was kind of interesting. Uh, I didn't know what it was at first, but it turns out it was an anime soundtrack. Uh, Gungrave, original soundtrack. Uno, I don't know where they get Spanish out of this, but anyway, maybe it was the first chapter in the Gungrave saga or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, all music and arrangement by Tsuneo Imahari. And some, uh, a few of the songs are vocal, but most of it is instrumental, and it take, takes on different moods. Some of it has, you know, like techno synth drum beats on it. Some of it is totally, uh, you know, symphonic, 
stuff. It's just really interesting uh, sounding stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not an anime fan, but you know, this just perked up my ears enough that I, I, I'm going to hang on to it and listen to it from time to time. It's really good, entertaining stuff. What can I say? And then the last one, which was uh, the most pleasant surprise, uh, Charlie Simpson. Uh, Charlie Simpson was part of a teen-oriented punk pop group called Busted back in the early 2000s. It was kind of a, a, a teen-friendly answer to Blink-182, or Green Day, I guess you'd say. And uh, yeah, he was one of the members of that group. And But this uh, stuff is more, as you, you can kind of tell from the cover art, um, most of it is uh, him with an acoustic guitar. It's kind of uh, leans toward the acoustic side. Some of the songs are electric, as I recall. I only listened to it once so far, but this is definitely going to get more in, more listens from me. Uh, yeah, very, very good stuff. He's, he's a good songwriter, a good uh, musician, good singer. So yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised by this. So yeah, this one's going to get several more listens to, uh, from me. I, I may end up looking for more of his albums. I think he's put out more than one album. But uh, yeah, very good stuff. Charlie Simpson, check him out if you haven't yet. Uh, you, you might like his stuff. So yeah. Okay, and now on to the first of this month's two mystery CD grab bags. Let's open these things up. Yeah, I, I try to get through the, uh, you know, the recap portion more quickly, but it ends up taking, you know, however long this is going to take. Uh, so yeah, I try to edit it down, but hey, I have so much fun, and maybe you guys have fun too, uh, listening to me just describing all these uh, CDs. But anyway, enough jibber-jabber. I don't want to make this video even longer than I want it to be. So, scissors. Scissors, which are always handy for opening things. <laughs> How's that for uh, insightful commentary? Anyway, okay, open the bag. I'll let you guys have a peek at what's inside here before I get to look at it. And here we go. Sorry. Orient the bag so that I can show the CDs to the camera more easily. Here we go. The first one is Avid, or AVID. Downside Up is the name of the album. So, as, you, as is usually the case with these grab bags, never heard of these guys. So, let's see what that has to offer. And I'm assuming it's rock. That's kind of what it looks like. And then a CD with no front or back cover. Nancy Griffith, Blue Roses, From the Moons. No idea how many tracks are on it or anything. So. Nancy Griffith is, is she a country artist or a contemporary Christian? I can't remember. But anyway, uh, The Hatters. You will be you. I kind of have to be, because I wouldn't do any good to be anybody else. Anyway, uh, yeah, this looks like looks like rock, uh, grunge or post-grunge. 1995 is the copyright date, and that's what The Hatters look like. Looking forward to listening to them as I always do. And now something is stuck here. What do we have here? This is a very unusual CD case. This, this tab here was uh, pulling the other CD out. Mike Wofford, Rob Thorson, and Joe La Barbera. Synergy. Well, Mike Wofford is the only one who's built on the spine. So, you you got me, people. Um, there was a new age group back in the 70s and 80s called Synergy, but I I don't know if this is the same gang or not. But this is a very interesting CD case. How about that? That almost require uh, demands a video in itself. The strangeness of the CD case. So uh, very interesting. <laughs> and with the other CDs that almost fell out when I took this one out. Have, oh, Blessed Union of Souls, and their uh, home, I think, is their debut album. So, yeah. At one point, I think I had a greatest hits of theirs, and uh, I liked it, but for some reason, I eventually got rid of it, probably in one of my CD purges. It was one of those CDs that I liked it, but didn't like it enough to hang on to it. Though, of course, after that I had second thoughts. So, anyway. Blessed Union of Souls. Their debut album, I think, called Home. Uh, be interesting to listen to that. And, ah, oh, this is actually one that I do have. John Cicada. And it's actually, <laughs> actually one that uh, he had, Skip had an overabundance of these. I think this title, there was like six of them on the bargain CD wall. But, yeah. 
good stuff latin pop from the early 90s late 80s um yeah 92 yeah just another day is one of his uh, probably his most successful single so yeah he's a good good artist if you're uh, if you've never heard of him check him out and then we have uh, don clement or clement an album called hush i have never heard of her i assume so that'll be an interesting one to uh, check out so, yeah. That is the first of two uh, CD grab bags. And now onto the CD I will be talking about today. And I actually almost did this one, was it last month or the month before? Uh, but I was overwhelmed by the sense of deja vu when I started talking about it. And so I thought, okay, I've already done this one. So I quickly, I stopped filming and went and searched for another one to do. But as it turns out, uh, a couple weeks ago when I finally decided to go over my bargain bag videos and actually uh, keep a record of uh, the ones that I've spotlit so to speak you know yay me for taking a freaking year to do that but anyway uh, i realized i had not talked about the cd before so let me talk about it now uh, and this is actually uh this is a group that i profiled back in uh the first couple months of my channel and during my one and thus far only discography video yes i i intend to do more discographies at some point i i will get around to it eventually honestly uh this is a group called 11 they are a rock band out of los angeles california and this is their uh, debut album, Awake in a Dream. And these guys were just amazing. Uh, this is actually one of the first dozen or so CDs that I ever bought. Uh, this is from 1991, incidentally. And uh, the band made five albums over the course of oh, about 15 years, I think. Their, their last album was from 2005, I think. And yeah, this is just a great, as I said, uh, I don't know if I'd call them hard rock, uh, but, but their rhythm section, the bass and the drums, is just really heavy and... I, use, I like to use the word stompy, just because it, it almost sounds like they're, all three band members are stomping on the floor while they're recording the songs. It's just got that boisterous energy, and the beats are just great, and the, the, the songs, the, the uh, verses and choruses are just catchy as hell in every single one of these songs. So if you come across this album, check it out. I, I don't know, they're probably too obscure to be on Spotify or anything, but yeah, check them out, honestly. They're just not to be missed. And uh, Alan Johannes and Natasha Schneider were the two, basically the two core members. And uh, they both, I believe they both played guitar and I think keyboards as well. And they equally shared lead vocal duties. And the thing with these guys is uh, they have very strange voices that I will warn you about right off the bat. So, I mean, if you like idiosyncratic voices, you know, voices that really stick out as unusual, then you'll like these guys even more. You'll like these guys. Uh, and the drummer for this record, I believe, was Jack Irons, who was also associated with Red Hot Chili Peppers. As I explained in my discography video, uh, I'll, I'll try and put a link to it, uh, if I remember to, in my description. It actually does include song clips, which so far, I believe, have not been uh, uh, tagged by YouTube's copyright bots. So, But anyway, yeah, as I said, yeah, this album is just catchy as heck from front to back. Uh, I could name I could name any song. Um, let's see, Rainbow's End is probably the catchiest one. It's one of my favorites on the entire album. Uh, Before Your Eyes, that one's great. It has an awesome, uh, almost proggy drum solo in the middle of the song. It's just fantastic. It's just, you know, ecstasy. If you love drums, that's a song to listen to, Before Your Eyes. Uh, you Are Mine is another one. It's got, it's got a great, um, almost a call and response chorus, but it's just, you know, uh, uh, Alan and Natasha kind of overlap their singing in, in the chorus of that song. It's just, it's really awesome. It's catchy as heck. What can I say? So the lyrics sometimes can be a little weird and sometimes downright nonsensical, uh, particularly this, the song Water and Power. The lyrics sound like something out of one of those weird psychedelic rock songs from the 60s, just make no sense at all. But, you know, just the appeal of this band's music is just beyond anything. I mean, just fantastic. And uh, unfortunately, the band is no longer recording. Uh, Natasha Schneider passed away in 2010, 2012, somewhere around there, possibly even late, uh, more recently than that. Uh, she had cancer and passed away at that point. Uh, so the band basically at that point ceased to exist. The band had rotating drummers. Jack Irons was only with them for a certain amount of time. And, you know, they've gone on to other projects. And I think uh, Alan Johannes, I believe, is a songwriter and producer now. Uh, he's, I think he's done quite a bit of uh, fairly recognizable uh, things, projects. So, but yeah, 
just a fantastic band. Uh, any one of their albums. Uh, they went a little bit heavier and more post-grungy on a couple of their uh, subsequent albums. But yeah, their entire discography is is re remaining in my collection forever until I die. Eleven, Awaken a Dream is their debut album. Check it out. Uh, check out any of their albums. I think you'll love them. Okay, now that that gush fest, love fest for Eleven is over with, let's get on to the second and final grab bag for the month of February. 2020. Let's see through it open. And I'm running short on insightful commentary, as, as you can tell. So. And you guys get the little peekies at what I'm about to open. Take a look here. See what wonderful and amazing things are in here. Uh, Jimmy Buffett. Funny that I said wonderful and amazing things. Not, not that I'm okay. I'm honestly probably not being fair to Jimmy Buffett because I haven't listened to much of him. So, but you know he's got that reputation for, for being cheesy, and uh, you know cheesy, easily easy listening junk. But uh, hey, I have never given him a fair shake. So, Jimmy Buffett, uh, the album Banana Wind. Definitely check that out. Then we have Peter White. I've been wanting this. I've had this on my wish list. Perfect moments. No, perfect moment. Singular. Uh, Peter White is a jazz guitarist. Just He's done a bunch of stuff with uh, other artists that I've liked, and I've actually had, as I said, a couple of his albums on my wish list. So, hey, yay! Finally got one. Then we have... Oh, this is a uh, Latin album. Sin Bandera. I guess uh, self-titled. Yeah, Sin Bandera is the name of the album. Incluye el éxito entra en mi vida. How's that for Spanish? Anyway, uh, yeah, I have no idea what uh, type of music these guys do. So, be interesting to listen to. I'm always up for Latin music, music in uh, different languages. Oh, and this one, do I still have this one or do, do, did I get rid of it? Uh, Lou Bega, a little bit of mambo. I at one point owned this CD. So, uh, hey, now I own it again. <laughs> bunch of well uh, better known stuff in this bag I'm kind of surprised oh and then we have uh, another Christmas CD that I will probably be uh, keeping on standby until November Disney Disney Christmas collection 2 yeah we'll uh, keep this as I said on hand for uh, November ish and uh, if I don't like it maybe uh, I, I know that uh, Garrett I think you have kind of a bit of a uh, penchant for Disney stuff so if it turns out I don't like this one uh, I'll keep it aside and if you want it for uh, Next Christmas, I will uh, maybe send it to you. So. And we have... Oh, this is one I already have. Stroke Nine, Nasty Little Thoughts. Great album, by the way. And actually, this will give me an idea. Maybe I will profile this one for next month's Bargain Bag as the, the Spotlight CD. Great album from a great rock band. Their debut album. I think debut, or if it's not their debut, it's their major label debut. Nasty Little Thoughts. Love this album. But I already have it, so I won't be listening to it. And then we have, oh, a soundtrack, Batman Forever, yeah. a Seal, Massive Attack, Mazzy Star, The Offspring, Nick Cave, Michael Hutchins. So, yeah, I will probably not be keeping this one. Uh, yeah, the Batman movies just didn't do a whole lot for me, but yeah. Well, and just like that, Bargain Bag is over. This is just over way too quick, isn't it? But hey, at least I got some, some really promising stuff to listen to, some better known stuff, and stuff I've actually been waiting to hear. Yay! So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, just I said, just as I said, you know, this bargain bag's over way too quick. Honestly, I just, I just have so much fun doing it. But uh, anyway, that's for it for Bargain Bag for February of 2020, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and be, browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. Unless it's this kind of crap. <laughs>